What's up, everyone? Happy Friday, September 10th. So now just to get into the watch list, kind of the market technicals, let's start with SPY. Looking at an upside level, looking at a downside level, the upside, if it gets to 452, holds up, I think it looks good to the upside. And if it breaks 449 and is weak, I think this has room to the downside. Also keeping in mind that it kind of lost the 9 EMA the prior day, so showing a little bit of weakness. And there is the 20 SMA below, so that should be support. If it loses that, then it could get some selling pressure. Okay, now the Qs. So showing a little bit more strength in the SPY, but the last two days, don't really love the candles. Still above the 9 EMA. The upside level, 382. If it holds that, looks good to the upside. And if it breaks 379, this looks like it has room to the downside. And now taking a look at Tesla. So still holding up all right. It is a little extended from the 9 EMA on the daily, but it is still strong. The upside level I'm looking at, 762. If it can take that out, looks good to the upside. If there is any weakness, takes out 752 to the downside. It does look like it has room down to 745 support, 740 support. Obviously, I don't know where it's going to go, but just realizing that the 9 EMA is at 738.12 on the daily too. Okay, now Netflix, so very extended on the daily chart. It's obviously hard to short strong stocks, but if it had a pullback, it would be healthy. So just knowing that if it takes out kind of the prior day's high area, 609, holds up, looks good to the upside. But as you can see, this 596 area, it's been a big area of support. If that breaks and the market is weak, it does look like it has room to the downside and it's extended from the 9 EMA. The 9 EMA is at 585.96. Now Facebook, so this is holding up all right, still above the 9 EMA, nice period of consolidation. If it takes out this 380 and holds up, looks good to the upside. Also knowing all-time high is at 384.33. If there's any weakness and the market overall is weak and it takes out this 377, it does look like it could pull back to support 376, 374 area, just knowing that it is strong on the daily still. And now looking at mRNA, so really strong stock, has the gap up this morning, keeping it pretty simple. If it can take out this 465 area, pre-market high, looks good to the upside. If there's any weakness and it breaks this 459, looks like it could pull back. And now BNTX, so nice period of consolidation, trading in sympathy to mRNA because of the vaccine stuff going on. So really I'm going to be looking at pre-market high. So it's on the move right now, just continuously chasing this up until market open. Right now, pre-market high is 361. That's going to be the upside level I'm looking at. If it can hold above that, knowing that it's back above the 9 EMA and the 20 SMA on the daily, it does look good to the upside. If there's any weakness and it breaks this pre-market low, 355, it looks like it can pull back. And last one on the list, AFRM has the really big gap up this morning. It's definitely extended on the daily chart, has a ton of open gaps. So not necessarily the cleanest, but it is showing a lot of strength. I figured this is kind of the crazy mover of the day. If it takes out this 115 and holds up, it looks good to the upside. And if it breaks this 111, kind of 110 support area, it does look like it can move its way back into the downside gap. So that's the watch list. Those are the levels. And what I'm going to do is try to be patient, especially being a Friday on a slower week, and just wait for the setups that I like to look for, which is opening range breaks or flag patterns. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the casino is open. But in all seriousness, when it comes to trading, I do not focus on the money. I'm focused on the process. Same patterns, the levels I focus on, just consistent approach each and every day. And there goes Tesla, big push off the open. I feel like every single day where there's a good setup on this, it takes a very fast, quick dip off the open and then it rips. And even though that is a, you know, a trade setup or something that I could take, I just know that, you know, if I take that a hundred times, there's gonna be plenty of times where that just does not work out. I don't think that's a high probability trade. And then when it goes south and it goes against you, man, it yanks really hard, really fast, and those losses can be huge. So I always try to wait, you know, at least a handful of minutes, five to 10 minutes before I want to consider taking a trade. Every now and then I'll take something pretty quick off the open. But overall, I know that if I'm patient, I'm so much better off. And look how nasty that rejection was. Instantly had a push. I'm sure there were people who probably chased that 761, 762. And then involved in a really, really, really hard pullback. And then here is the situation where it's all about hoping it comes back to your entry. And if it does, then whew, I feel good. I, I kind of escaped a really dangerous situation. And then when it doesn't, that's where those huge days where you give back weeks or maybe even months worth of work. Now we got Netflix showing some weakness right at that 596. Now being that that you know, was a pretty aggressive move down, and I don't really want to chase it into 596, 
What I want to see now is does this break and does it form some sort of pattern as well as do the SPY and the Qs get a little weak because they have gapped up. So trying to wait for the market to choose a direction and then trade in the direction of the market versus fighting it. But like one thing I can tell already just by looking at this is look at the volume. I mean, 19,000 shares traded, very low volume at the moment. And I know yesterday was a very slow day in the market. So there could be a possibility that today is a slow day and I don't want to force anything, especially when things are slow and lower volume. And I'm also watching this mRNA, pre-market high 465, also high a day, kind of a opening range break, not very clean, but I think 465 is a big technical level. So having some trouble at VWAP and the 9 EMA, I am watching everything together on my left screen. So it really is just about pattern recognition. I'm trying to wait for one to form a pattern that I like. And then that's obviously when I switch it up on my light speed and take the trade. So I'm still just watching. And to be honest, I can already tell that it's starting off a little bit slower. The reason why is there's no like indicator I use. It really is just the eye test. I'm looking at the candlesticks. I'm looking at the price action and nothing is really moving very fast right now. Everything is still kind of in a range. The market overall is pulled back a little bit, but it's still kind of holding up. So when I see that, it lets me know that, you know, it could possibly be a slower day that, you know, things can change very quick in the market, but at least for right now, you know, I do not feel the need to have to push. I don't feel the need to have to force a trade. It's either going to look good. The setup is going to be there, or I just don't click any buttons. And even looking at this Facebook, so check out this. I mean, the pattern looks good. Nice flag pattern, holding up above VWAP, above the nine. It has high day at 383.08 and has all time high above, but like, just look how slow this is moving right now, right? Like there's nobody really buying this. I mean, we've seen aggressive price action. I'm sure, you know, if you're a trader, you know what aggressive price action looks like. You don't really have to think too much. And when I find myself trying to overthink I know that it's just not A plus price action and I need to just wait until I see that. I feel like the easiest setups are the ones where it's pretty obvious. So huge move to the upside, pretty quick consolidation, then it starts that next leg higher or vice versa. Really big move to the downside, consolidates for a few minutes and the next leg lower. And then you also have spy and cues that are going in that same direction. So kind of everything lining up. And when there are things that are off, you know, right there, that's kind of where I have my spidey senses of, let's just not do a thing. I gotta say that I think a lot of trading, a really big advantage that a lot of people have, or just like I have compared to people who watch my videos that are newer, is just experience. You know, I've had my eyes on these screens for going on almost five years. So I can pretty quickly tell when I think it's gonna be a better day or vice versa, when I think it's gonna be a little bit of a slower day. And then when I have those feelings, almost kind of like a gut feel, sixth sense type of thing, I already know if it's a day where I feel like, all right, I got to push it. I got to take advantage. That's where the P&O comes from, or I got to back off, relax, and there's no reason to get chopped up. So I'm still just watching, but to be honest, things are pretty slow right now. Maybe that'll change and it'll pick up in a minute, but for now, everything is in a range and I don't, I don't really want to take trades when that's happening. So just, and also something to touch on, like this is how I manage my risk as the day goes on. Like we're going on almost 20 minutes into the day already and I haven't taken a trade. So when that much time goes on and even more, the last thing that I want to do is take any sort of big size. And not that I trade big size as is, but instead of taking five contracts, you know, maybe I'll only take three just because I can already tell that it's not one of those days where I feel like I should put that risk on. So I'm definitely not going to be trading 10. You know, if something looks really good, maybe five. But overall, being that it's this far into the day and the price action is just a little slower, I manage the risk by saying, okay, instead of taking my normal size, I'll just take three. If it looks good, take the three contracts and then obviously have the same attitude like I always do, go quick or just get out. And that's just what works best for me. I mean, the really important thing with trading is to figure out what works best for you. Just because I do something does not mean that that's gonna work well for you. This really is just a ton of trial and error to finally get to a place where you feel really comfortable about what you're doing. Okay, so this Facebook is waking up. I'm gonna take it for the high day right there. The 383, just seeing if we can get a little bit of follow through. Facebook's not a huge mover, so I know it's not Tesla. You know, if I can get a quick move on this, I just gotta be okay with a really small gain. But that was pretty nice. All right, it's a pretty nice candle. My entry is 166 on the options. Okay. I'm just gonna come out of that. So 
obviously had the push and this probably is going to go a little bit further right but it is what it is uh i i kind of chased it at 383 so obviously was not the perfect entry i just really wanted to see if this could get a move through 383.50 knowing that all-time high was above and it may but when it showed a little bit of struggle there and it started to pull back in also looking at the spy just realizing that the spy is weak so i'm kind of going against the trend you know just to be careful i was in it for you know, just under a minute, but I get the push, starts to slow down a little bit. I do not want to be involved in any sort of pullback. So when it could not go through 383.50 really fast, starts to come in, just get out of the way to be safe, especially on a Friday. Looking at this AFRM, which looks interesting. High days, 111.50. Had an opportunity to sell off. It did not. I'm going to go long at 112. Just 200 shares. Keep it pretty small. See if this thing can catch a little bit of momentum. See if we can get a whole number break. That was a really nice move off of 110. If anybody shorted this below VWAP, I would think that high day would be their stop and maybe this can be a momentum move. Okay, we got a nice break of 112. I just want to see this really start to move past 112 pretty fast. Okay, very nice. So now my entry's at 112. I do not want to let this go red. Just want to see if I can get a little bit more on this. All right, what happens into 113? Okay, I'm just going to get out on the pullback. I'll take a, a very fast 50 cent scalp. And the only reason why I got out of that is because look at the size of that candle. I mean, that was a three point candle and I chased it two points into the candle. And then when it came into 113, it did not break pretty quick. It starts to pull back just to be safe. I'll take the quick profits and knowing that SPY is kind of weak. So starting to see some weakness here. Don't really want to go against that. And then just in case if AFRM did something like this, I mean, I did not want to be a part of that. So it just so happened to be that it worked out and I will take my quick 50 cent scalp. And there it goes, right through 113. But this little pullback, that nasty pullback down through 112, I don't want to be a part of that, you know, because then there's that that mindset of, okay, is this going to be worse? Does this pull back against me? And then if so, all right, well, I want to wait for this to come back to break even type of thing. So I just, I'm very defensive. And of course that can lead to me leaving some profits on the table. But at the end of the day, the only thing that I really care about is being consistent, even if it's not a huge amount. So there was definitely more to, to get on this, but you know, I'll take my 50 cent move and especially being that the overall market is pretty slow. So it's 30 minutes into the day. I've taken two trades. I had an opportunity for them to be a little bit bigger than what they were, but that's okay. It happens. I'm just realizing that I've already taken two quick trades on a Friday and a slower week. I made a little bit of money on Facebook. Got a nice little quick scalp on AFRM. Time to play defense. No need to push it. I don't want to force anything. And even though I'm small green, I don't want to give that money back. Okay, so just over 30 minutes into the day. I don't really see much else. And the market is a little slower. So now let's just go check out the PL. Ended up making 25 bucks in the Facebook calls and $101 on AFRM to be up $126. Not a lot of money, but I'll take it for 33 minutes of work. Appreciate you watching the video. Feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. I just wanna highlight a couple really cool things that I have to offer. The first is my newsletter watch list that I'm gonna be posting on my private Twitter 30 minutes before the open of each trading day. Here's an example of what that's gonna look like. So I'm gonna do a quick overview of the market, the SPY, the Qs, the upside levels, the downside levels, and then a sentence or two is to the overall bigger picture. Make sure to highlight any market news or events that are happening that day. And then I'm gonna list the four to six stocks that I'm watching that day. If there's any company specific news, all the upside levels and the downside levels, and then do a quick bigger picture, a couple sentences as to what's going on in the daily chart. This is everything that's in my head prior to market open. This is how I prepare and a really easy way to get access to my trading process. One page with everything I'm looking at, all the technical levels, and all the news delivered 30 minutes before market open in a really organized fashion. Also, I have a call service. So if you want something that's a little bit less of a commitment, you wanna connect with me directly, talk about my trading, my journey along the way, and just connect with another trader, this is really great. And this can be a video call or a regular call, whatever you're comfortable with. It's a one-time fee and it's gonna be for one hour. So if you're interested in either one of these, I will put the links in the description below.